Hello and welcome. Happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing well and had a good week. Today what we're going to be talking about is the II910, II900 and talking through how do you get this out of the box and get going with it right away. Um, some best practices and whatnot. So I'll kind of skip part of my intro but uh, this is Fridays with Brandon. Thanks for joining and this is episode number 56 of Fluke Fridays. So there's a lot of content, um, obviously 56 episodes and then there's other episodes in there too. I've got several playlists. If you're not familiar with playlists, check those out below. I have them uh, based on topic, based on model, different things. So you can check those out. And I'm trying to think if there's any other housekeeping things. Anyways, let's jump into it. I-900, I-910. A review for those of you that might not be familiar with this. This is essentially an ultrasonic tool. It's got ultrasonic microphones in here and it's all about detecting air leaks and or partial discharge or corona on high voltage applications or arcing for electricity. How does it work and how is it different than traditional ultrasound? Traditional ultrasound has a single microphone, you've got a set of headphones, you tune the ultrasonic tool to a very specific frequency that you want to be listening for, and whenever the microphone hears that high um, ultrasonic frequency, it then produces audible sound in your ear so that you can identify, oh, I hear it over here, kind of like a metal detector, and as you get closer and closer, you continue to get uh, more and more narrowed down. Fluke's done it a little bit different, where we have a whole array of microphones and a camera, a visual camera. And so as a result, what we do is we actually put color on the screen where we hear the leak. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can do an echo for you. So you could see that echo on the wall from the noise I was making. But it works with compressed gas, as well as compressed air, and even partial discharge for high voltage applications. So that's kind of why somebody would buy this. But then once you get this, what are best practices? You get this out of the box, you turn it on, you put the battery in, turn it on. What do you do next? So that's kind of what we're going to go through in this video and some of the best practices. So first thing is you're going to be trying to find leaks. When it turns on, it's probably already set to this frequency, but if you're not familiar, you do want to set it at a frequency. Somewhere between 35 and 45 kilohertz is kind of the best frequency if you are going to be looking for air leaks. You can adjust the frequency by scrolling up and down. See if I go down here where the, all the, this is my voice down here, these uh, little audio amplitude bars coming across, and you see a lot of noise. If I scroll up here, those all go away because we, again, are at a much higher frequency that we're listening for. So you're going to want to listen between 35 and 45. I will say this, if you have occupancy sensors in your facility, sometimes those ultrasonic occupancy sensors will be between like 38 kilohertz, something like that. If that's the case, you will see a very large spike, a lot of amplitude right at that, whatever, 38, 38 and a half right here. All you have to do is make this, you can make this smaller, and you can either get right above it or right under it, and that will make everything go away, okay? And it'll make it much more clean. If you do have some of those ultrasonic occupancy sensors, it'll make it kind of go haywire. And that's how you can still use it in those environments, okay? Um, that's the first thing that I would recommend is the frequency that you're going to be at. The next thing is before you go out and start taking images, I like hitting this right here. Um, you can create folders. So just create a new folder, name it your facility or the line that you're going to be going down. Um, we'll just say test for today. And now all the images I take will go into that test folder. Thus, you can take a whole bunch of images, a single folder, you, you then, how, what's the next step? You have to take this to the computer and get it off the computer. How you're gonna do that, you're gonna go to the computer, use a USB-C cable, connect to your computer. It's gonna show up just like a thumb drive. Open it up, go into storage, find the folder. You'll see two different files in there. You're gonna see an AS2 file, that's a fluke proprietary file 
uh, nomenclature, and then a JPEG file. If you just want the images, you can pull the images off and just go from there and make a Word document or whatever. If you like the AS2 file, you're gonna do the leak estimation through this called leak queue that I'll get to in a second. Then you're gonna need the AS2 files in the report generator. I do have an, a video on that. You'll have to look for it in the playlist for the i900, i910 playlist. Okay, um, so you're gonna go out, you're gonna take images. When you go out, how do you know it's a leak versus not a leak? Uh, leaks are gonna be very solid, um, very steady, solid, and very tight image blobs. If it, they're very sporadic, they're, they could be a leak, but you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. Um, but it's very obvious, if it's a good leak, it's gonna be small, um, steady, color blob. Now, when you find those, you're going to be able to take the image. Oh, you might see one of those solid colors on like an I-beam or concrete floor. Most likely, they're not leaking. That's going to be an echo or reflection. So if you see that and you're aiming at, you know, you're not aiming directly if you're aiming directly at the wall, it's probably behind you. If you're aiming at like a 45 degree to the wall, then you need to kind of think, okay, it's gonna bounce this way and then over that way, or if I was looking at the shelf, maybe it would hit here and then it's actually coming from over there. So that's where you have to use your brain a little bit, but that's one thing that customers really like about these tools is they're very intuitive. Unlike traditional ultrasound where you're gonna to need to go to probably two days of training to really feel comfortable using it, you can get this out of the box just go out and start playing with it and you'll find a lot of leaks and know exactly what a actual leak looks like versus a reflection. And even when it is a reflection, it's very quickly to dismiss it as a reflection or an echo and go find the actual leak because you just use your angles. Whereas with traditional ultrasound, sometimes you'll hear that and you don't realize, okay, is that just an echo or is that the actual source? Um, other things to think about when you get this, if you have an II-900, you're gonna, well, with either of them, you do a touch screen, this menu is gonna show up over here on this side, and you can click image, and you have a few different capture modes. Right now I'm in image, image is just a still image, video, obviously a video. Leak Q is Fluke's um, estimation. It's the ability to take the image and estimate how much volume of air you're losing, thus how much that, that air leak is costing you or gas leak is costing you. And then PDQ, that is only available on the II-910, not the II-900. And the PDQ, what that will do is, it stands for partial discharge quantification, I think. And basically it's gonna count the partial discharge of the corona or the arcing that you have and show you how severe that problem is in the medium voltage or high voltage application. Obviously memory, you can go into memory, click on one of these, scroll through it. All right, that's a new firmware. If yours, if yours does not scroll like this, you might have an early version of an i900 or an i910, and you need to update the firmware. I think I also have a video on updated firmware. If I don't, or if it's not in that playlist, send, put me a comment below and I'll show you how to update it. It's very easy. Uh, Next, uh, acoustics, I never mess with these settings, but if you're smarter than me and you can figure them out, go ahead. But I just say, leave them in the settings. The one thing you can turn off is, oh, no, no, no. I was thinking markers. I'm gonna skip that. I don't ever mess with those. This, you pick the colors you want on the screen. If you don't like red, blue, you can do the uh, iron bow or the gray scale. Again, user preference. And then markers, you can turn a center point marker on and off. Um, if you, oop, sorry, if you get to the partial, if you get on normal image, see that center marker, you can turn that thing on and off. I don't know if, how easy I can see. See the decimal reading there in the middle? You can turn that those crosshairs on and off with the markers. And then you've got some settings here, okay? So if you don't like JPEG, you prefer PNG, you can do that, and time date and reset factory and all that good stuff, okay? This is enough to get you pretty dangerous with the I-910, I-900. You will be able to go out, find leaks in your facility, and really save your company some money with energy savings and or reducing downtime. Okay, if you have any questions about this, 
leave them in the comments below. Next, we do have a couple questions that came in this week. And I'm gonna try to answer them. So this is from Arash, a very frequent commenter. Thank you for that. So it says, hello, good time engineer. Do 15 series fluke multimeters have secret codes and keys such as the 70 series and the 80 series? Um, I'm not 100% sure what, what the question is with the 15. Uh, the 15 series. I'm guessing it's either the 11X multimeters or it's the 15 series of insulation testers. So the 1507, 1580, uh, 1587 FC, um, maybe a 1505, I'm not sure, or 1503. 1503, 1507, and 1587 FC. The answer is, regardless whether you're talking the 11X series of multimeters or you're talking the uh, insulation testers, they do have power up modes. And the best way to find that is go to the Fluke website, download the uh, user manual in your language, and then search power up uh, options. And it's gonna spell it all out. It'll show you exactly what it is. The 1507, I looked up those before I came and made the video, and it's there's only like one, one or two power up features. So it's not as extensive as some of the multimeters. I assume that the 11X multimeters have a very similar, how they have quite a few different options, but I didn't look that one up for you. So that answers that one. That was question number one. We only have two questions today. Question number two, and this is a good question. Well, they're all good. So don't feel like if I don't say it's a good question, it's not a good question. Hello, very cool video. I wanted to know which thermal camera is best for PCB troubleshooting. Um, PCB, I assume that's PCB boards, so like computer boards, uh, and you're troubleshooting trying to find hotspots, and I have an answer for that. I would recommend the Fluke TIX 580, and I would also recommend a lens with that. So the Fluke TIX 580, I will have a link to the different um, different products I talked about in the comments below. So you can look up that, the TIX 580, as well as the macro lens that can go with the TIX 580. And that part number is gonna be an FLK-Lens, L-E-N-S-E, slash 25 MAC2. So the macro lens, and the TIX 580. The TIX580 will have a, a tripod mount, so you'll be able to mount it right over the board. And with the macro lens, you can put it like really close, with only like a couple centimeters away from the board, and you can see down to 25 microns. Or, I think it's 25 microns. So really, really small. I think it's like a quarter of a hair. Um, and it's really impressive how much clarity you get when you're trying to look at those small little pieces on a PCB board. I hope that helps. I think that's um, everything I have. And you guys have a great weekend. Take care and keep the comments coming. Keep the questions coming. They keep my videos more entertaining, at least for me to make. Thanks. Take care.